hello everybody. Today we welcome Jan Slovak from Masurak, Surak University. He should speak on the uh, almost invariant differential calculus. Yeah. Yes, something like that. So thank you very much, Juan. So actually, you were talking about me coming to this local seminar here for something like decades. So I'm happy that it's coming to that point today. And, and actually, I also just the first time ever was in someone's office in this building. Although I was employed by the Mathematic Institute of Mathematics of the Academy of Sciences for quite a few years, starting in 83, but it was in the Brno branch. So, so I will not write the topic of the talk it was told, but let me let me introduce what I mean by this newly invariant, and then I will try to explain a little bit. So actually, actually I guess Igor already heard some of this because I will be following a joint work with Andreas Chap, which was more finished something like 2005, no, no, 2006. But then we, then we thought it be, belongs to the second half of the book, which we haven't written yet. And, and also it turned, out, it turned out later than when we wanted to write it down. It, it actually was technically more sort of, well, not complicated, but simply one has to, to sit down and, and put the things properly into order. And finally, it will be now very soon published in this special volume of contemporary math mathematics dedicated to Sasha Vinogradov. And I. Yeah, the paper. Yeah, yeah. So, so the paper, I mean the paper. And the paper will appear very soon. What I have in hands here is the, is the proofreading copy of the paper from contemporary mathematics. And it's dedicated to Sasha Vinogradov and, and those who were in Moscow a year and a half back heard a bit of that because I didn't come very far there. So the origin, say motivation and idea behind what's called diverse ways. So, so I would call it invariant calculus. It's the fact that if you are on the conformal geometry, oh, this. So there, you know what? You have got something like the irreducible tensor spaces or similar natural bundles, and you can equip them with the weights. So you have weighted ones, and they all correspond to some representations of the conformal orthogonal group, right? So it's the orthogonal representations plus some weight coming from the center. And for for each that conformal geometry on a manifold, you have you have the the class of the matrix in the conformal class, and each of them comes with the Lebesgue connection. And so, if you take two of such connections, then you can simply ask what the new covariant derivative in the direction of the vector field of the section sigma of the say appropriate tensor bundle, right? Could be just functions with some weight. What what's the change? if you have changed the connection. So what you what you can observe is that it's the original derivative. And then what, what's coming to that is something I will explain. So it's some sort of bracket. And the two arguments are this is a one form and this is a vector field. And it's the conformal geometry, right? So this is a one form on the manifold and this is a vector field. And the bracket comes because the one forms, if, if I draw it as the Lie algebra, so this will be the conformal geometry as a homogeneous space. So it will be the conformal structure of the round sphere, right? And on the round sphere, Sn, you will have, you, you, you can write it as, say, SO or, or O, it doesn't matter, or spin, who cares? n plus one, one is it if it's positive definite, right? And the structure of the Lie algebra is this. 
it has got a grading so there will be yeah and, and the sn is if you if you quotient out a subgroup and the subgroup is the upper triangular one here and the sizes are one and one right so so this is the o n plus one one so you see here in the middle you have the orthogonal one here is just the slots for the for the weights here actually it's only because it's anti-symmetric with respect to the anti-diagonal so so here you simply have something which is computed from here the same here so here you see that's the tangent vectors and here you see this is the epsilon, the one forms right and the and the algebra in the bracket comes actually in some sense i will come to in a moment from the new bracket, right? And then because it's graded, the algebra G, so this is the group G, and the algebra G equals G minus one plus G zero plus G one, right? And so this is the G minus one. Here are zeros because it should be anti-symmetric anti with respect to that uh, anti-diagonal. And so this corresponds to the tangent space and this corresponds to the one forms and the cartan turing form of the algebra corresponds to the evaluation of the forms on fields right so that's the algebraic language how to get it and here this is so so this is something which sits in g0 and because this section sigma comes from a natural bundle which is is defined by a representation of G0, then of course, this guy will be acting on sigma. And that's the change, right? So, so in each geometry, which is of this kind and, and the, the filtering, filtering would, would be one graded, it will always be the same formula. And you see that this is how to do the first derivatives, right? And immediately you see, well, with some little computation, but it's, I think, very well believable that if you just do this, then if you fix the open part of the representation, then you get something. And if you equip sigma with a free weight to be decided which one to choose, then you see that to kill this action, you will have to choose exactly one value of the weight and you make the operator invariant because it won't change. And that's the way how to deal with and, and, and all these kind of, of exterior differential, right? The, the divergence of vector fields, all these well known operators are created this way, right? So you simply have to get the right value. And then you, and it's uniquely solved. It's easy. But the problem starts with the second order and higher. Because if you hit it with another nabla, then of course you also hit the epsilon. Yeah, and I didn't, yeah, and I didn't say why epsilon. Epsilon is simply the, epsilon is the, uh, say, change, change between. between the metrics, right? The choices. Change between the choices. You just want to see because of the, you, you see everything good because of the camera from above. Yeah, but that's because this one is not out of the screen, yeah? Yeah. Oh, now it's much better. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, but I will need those boards anyhow. But I finish, I finish the story here and then I move, right? So, so if you go from one metric to the other, if you go from one metric to the other, so you achieve the change of function, right? An epsilon is differential of the function. So, so well, with some technicalities, but essentially, uh, 
if you view the conformal geometry as uh, a G structure, then of course you have a bit more connections which are compatible with the G structures and these are the so-called veil connections. And the veil connections are actually on a fine space modeled over one forms. And if you move from, from matrix to matrix, then the one forms are special, they are closed, right? Um, right. So that's, that's about the conformal geometry and the last thing on this table, right? So, so fortunately, already Scouten in the 30s came up with construction of a very special tensor, which is called row tensor or Scouten tensor. And the row tensor has got striking properties because if, well, the row tensor has got two indices. So it seems, it seems like to be a symmetric two form. That's what it is if the connection comes from a metric. If it's a general connection, it's not necessarily symmetric, but it's a two form. But for our set purposes, we need to view it as a one form value to one form. Don't care about the symmetry, it's simply a one form value to one form. And therefore, we algebraically evaluate it on Xi and we know how it changes. It will be the role of Xi plus nabla xi epsilon plus something algebraic. We enjoy an action two times on xi. Right, so this is the change. And again, this formula is true for all the one graded geometries. And Scalpin noticed that, and I noticed that it's a very beautiful tensor because it suggests that if you differentiate this, you get also a nabla xi of epsilon there, right? So, so you can you can try to balance the phase of being natural by adding some correction terms in terms of rho, right? So that was the original idea. And, and in 70s, 80s, there was Volkmar Wunsch in Germany who made this into a very sophisticated calculus describing how to construct iteratively formulae from nablas and rows, which, which are not necessarily invariant, but have got the property that the transformation rule would remain algebraic in epsilon. Right? So that's the explanation of the word nearly. So it's nearly invariant because it's not invariant, but at least we know that the change will be only algebraic in the, uh, in the change. So it's something like an ansatz. If you want to classify all operators between the, the targets. Yeah. Right, so that's, that's, the, that's the sort of original motivation. Now let me come to more serious business. And I hope I will not end in the beginning like in Moscow. <laughs> it was turned out to be too complicated to come somewhere. Um, right. So now let's let's remind you how the things are working. So I'll go here. And I hope, yeah, I can also move this up to LO1 to see it. Better? <laughs> oh, I think it's it's available right there. Right. So um, so the crucial way how to view similar things and how to explain actually how the conformal stuff works as well because that's something which is dealt with for, I don't know, 120 years at least, or maybe 100 years seriously. 
and still the people are not very very smart in how to deal with the invariance yeah it's too complicated but it seems that the 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 right approach to the conformal geometry is to start with the homogeneous case so as, as you saw i had just g mod p this was the sn right so i will call it now m and i can also draw it in such a way that i got v um yes g over m and with these are group so there is the moral cartan form right and <laughs> now we want to have a curve analog for general generalization of this homogeneous situation then we simply take a principal fiber bundle so this will be a principal fiber bundle with structure group P, same one, right? So we don't have the G there. Instead, we have got just a principal fiber bundle. But what we do have is the Cartan connection. And the Cartan connection is exactly the same as, as, uh, In this case, with the same axioms, except we insist that the axioms are fulfilled as much as it makes sense, right? Because if it's if it's not making sense, then we can't request them, right? But what does make, make sense? So the moral cartan form is right equivalent, so at equivalent with respect to the right multiplication, right? On G, but now we have the right multiplication only for the elements in P. So we request that. Right? The multi-platform form is an isomorphism if restricted to one tangent space. We can keep that. It's okay. Right? And the third one is that it recovers, recovers the left invariant vector fields, right? So, so if I take left invariant vector field, then a moral cartan form tells me what was the generator, right? And this makes sense, again, only for the vertical fields. So the so-called fundamental fields, right? So, so it just does all these, and there's a contact connection, right? And in case G is semi-simple and P parabolic, then we call it parabolic geometry. Now, in all such cases, all this, then we have the G algebra G equals G minus, which is actually a Lee sub algebra, which is equivalent, which is isomorphic to G mod P. Then there is the Levy part of P. And then there is the Neopotan part of P. Right? That's always the case. So this together is the P. Right? And this is always the case. And so, of course, we, we can write. P e plus will be the exponential image of the G plus, right? And G will be P over P plus. Which is which is understood as a subgroup, right? So it's 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 isomorphic to this, but we, we view it as a chosen subgroup in P, right? So, so actually, this is something which is equivalent to fixing the fixing the gradient element in the parabolic sub subalgebra, and all the choices are equivalent up to conjugation, right? 
So, so that's how we do. And so, so every G in G, it's now a different thing. So I don't know why we call it also G, but it's not the fracture D, G. It's all some element in G zero times X, and here I write epsilon. Eh? That's where the epsilons come from. And obviously, because we fixed, fixed the G minus as something which with the help of the Cartan connection is giving us the tangent bundles, then we also have got what we call the horizontal vector fields on G, which is simply the inverse image of the elements in G minus. So it's something like whenever I fix a frame, I get an embedding of the tangent space there nicely, right? And of course, here we know that D omega plus one half omega omega is zero. But in general, this will be a two form on G. And by the equivalency like with principal connections, it will be horizontal. So it, it just descends to the manifold, but the values will be done in what we call the adjoint vector. So the representation space coming from the algebra G, right? And that's a general fact, which I will here just, just recall under the name natural bundles, natural bundles, and the natural bundles are simply arriving in such a way that you take a representation V that will be a P representation. Right, then I can create it V of M will be G cross over P V, right? So the associate bundle. So these are the natural bundles. And if I am, if we are at the homogeneous space, so in the homogeneous world, and this is exactly what the people call homogeneous bundles, because if you get a homogeneous bundle, then obviously the fiber over the origin of the space is a, is a P action, and the P action gives you the V module defined on that fiber, and then the whole homogeneous bundle is equivalent to this, right? And in particular, A M equals G cross P with G because G is also a P module by the add, right? And this is called it the adjoint vector bundle. And in general, I will not need it, so I won't go into any detail, but if it happens that the representation is a restriction of a G representation, then there is a so-called tractor or D so-called tractor connection, the canonical connection, because we can always extend the Cartan connection omega to a genuine principal connection on the extended fiber bundle, which is defined as G associated with the group G, right? And this extends the structure group, right? And, and then there is a unique way how to extend omega equivalently across the extended vertical fiber, and this gives you a principal connection. And therefore, all the, all the associated bundles, all the natural bundles, which come from actually a G representation come equipped with a natural connection. And that was actually behind the interest which appeared around Roger Penrose in his early days of studying the, the, the twister approach to space-time, because we know that there is a twister connection which is canonical and then later people like Michael Eastwood and others around found out that this is an incarnation of the canonical Cartan connection. And it's an incarnation in the case where, where you simply notice that the, that the G in that case is SL4, which is the same as spin six in the complex world. And the standard representation for SL4 is of course a tractor representation. And the standard representations falls into two slots, 
And the two slots are the two spinners with the proper weight. And putting them together gives you the twisters. And, and the two spinners are simply not invariant. The parallel transport simply mixed them. Okay? But, but it's just the Cartan connection, which is behind that. So that's an actual bundle. And the last thing I will need is that whenever I've got such a natural bundle, so in particular, as examples, we have got this one. Tm equals g cross p g minus, but the g minus is now viewed as g mod p, so I take the truncated p action, right? So it's well defined. I simply forget everything which spits out of g minus, right? So I should better better write g mod p here, whereas omega one m, so t star m. Is G cross P G plus, and this makes sense because this is a P sum on you, right? So, so it's very easy, very beautiful, and also this explains this explains what I meant by the brackets there, right? Because because the one forms and vector fields appear actually in these adjoint vectors as a component components of this G. And there is the Cartan killing form, which gives you the, the bundle uh, operation, which is algebraic, right? And that's the bracket. Um, all right, so that's it. And now the last piece I will need is that sections sigma, which go from M to, to VM. Are equivalent to equivalent mappings, which I will call sigma theta, which go from G to V, the variant. Right, so if I move in the frames, I have to move the same way here, but with the inverse from the left, right? Because here I have got right action, and here I, here I have got left action, so I have to have inverse there. So that's very good. And now we can come to the absolutely crucial moment. Um, right, so shall I put it? I, I shall put it here, right? So you will see it here. Um, So this is the veil connection. So I will need that veil connections. And actually, I, what I need is a bundle of veil connections. But what does it mean, veil connections? So actually, what we have is we have got the G. The G is sitting over, say, G0 which is the same as G mod P plus, right? So this is again a principal fiber bundle. This structure group P over P plus, which is G zero. And this sits over M, which is G over P. Well, I, I'm in the curved world. But what does it mean if I have a wave structure, a wave connection? It's the same thing as having a section here which I call S, which is G0 of P variant, right? So it will be just a reduction of the principal fiber bundle to the structure group G0. But of course, we know that it's a tautology that you have, well, unfortunately, it's yet another A, but it's a different A than this one, right? So, so this one goes back to Andy and, and Thomas Mettler, who wrote a paper on this some years back, and they I don't know why I used A here. Uh, and this A is simply G over G0. Yeah, that's what you what you have to view if you want to see the, the reductions of the fiber bundles. And yeah, now it has nothing in common with this our, our parabolic geometry, so whatever. Whatever subgroup G0 in the group P you have, you just have this, right? This is again projected this way, and these reductions are the same as sections as bar here, 
slide. But then let us now at A. So G is now a G0 fiber bundle, so principal fiber bundle over A. Yeah, you see that. And omega, omega is what? Is a one form? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So, how much more parabolic? No, I'm saying parabolic now. Don't care about parabolic. It's more now, yeah. But, but we shall come back to parabolic because it's better to imagine it is parabolic. So even you can imagine it's it's conformal, right? So so it's a very special choice. Simple, but it's a non-trivial example of the. What are parabolics? Yeah. Yeah. So we have Grassmannian geometries, or say quaternion geometries. That's that's all. All one graded. Yeah. You can also have the Hermitian one graded ones. You can have you can have CR geometries. They are all two graded, but they are they are one of the of the many CR parabolic. It's, it's one example of the parabolic contact geometries. So for each, it is. So uh, if you if you take any any class of algebra, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then you have always just one class of contact geometries there in the com in the complex setup. And these are nice examples of compact of of uh, complex contact parabolic geometries right so cr is a very special example so and we have plenty others right so so it's a quite quite big group and actually it appears quite often in physics or other applications because because for some strange reason the semi-simple structure groups simply pop up and as soon as they are semi-simple so the only way how to get con something contact is Something compact is to to choose a parabolic group P, because because one of the definitions of what parabolic is is that G mod P is compact. It's if and only. You you can it's all symmetric, so it always goes from minus k to plus k. In the conformal case, it's minus one. What? Three it's not Z, it's not Z3 like grid. No, no, why should it be Z3? It's G minus G plus and G Z. Actually, G minus, for example, in the contact case, it would go to, to minus one, minus two, right? So it's two graded. So but it's it's in some sense over Z graded, but it's it's finite. Yeah. Right, let's come back here. So now we have omega is now a one form going from G. So let's repeat it from TG, right? To well, maybe I will write it another way. Omega is omega minus plus omega plus plus omega zero, right? And it goes from TG into G, but written this way, take into account that G over A is a G0 bundle, it's actually an affine connection. And this is a soldering form. And this is, this is a connection form. Right? This, now that now we are in parabolic setup, and this all over this case, right? And because we are on a G0 principal fiber bundle now, everything which is G0 invariant splits. So you see that everything simply splits nicely, right? So, so it means that EA equals actually the vertical tangent bundle. 
I, I will just look how I call it. Yeah, I call it L min minus plus L plus, right? And L minus, it's the counterpart to omega minus in the soldering. So it will be something. So this equals like if I call, do I call it somehow? Yes, I call it pi. So this one is the pullback of Tm. And this is the kernel of T pi. Right, that's the vertical one. And, and of course, because it's an affine connection, so we have a canonical derivative. I split it again to the derivative restricted to arguments here and derivative restricted to arguments here, right? So that's for free there, absolutely for free. So the Cartan connection, the Cartan connection on the for the parabolic geometry on M happens to be actually a nice, a fine connection with very special features on the bundle of the base structures so what, that's what we call it and that's the that's the beginning of, the end of, the end of our our story now because now we can also see that this has got the canonical Covariant derivative, and you will have the, the curvature, curvature components, which will be which will be valued so T, Y, and W. T is the kind of torsion thing, which is the part of the curvature valued in the omega in the g minus this is the part valued in g plus so it's two two components and the torsion of this canonical connection and this is then the real curvature of the affine connection right this is called the torsion this is called the cotton york so we call it torsion universal torsion universal cotton york and universal veil curvature and of course, they are related to what we see then if we do the reductions and where is the veil connections really. Right. So let's move on. Now, I will leave this there. And the important thing here is that, of course, of course, if we if we consider if we consider say the sections of Vm, then they are they correspond by this to equivalent mappings which are p equivariant. So they they are a subspace in the sections of VA and V A is simply the same thing but built from the G0 restriction, right? Of the representation. So of course the V module, the, 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 the P module V is in particular G module, right? G0 module. So we, we see that the sections are there, right? So without hesitation, without hesitation. We, we may think whatever we do invariantly here on these sections, right? And if it by chance happens that it will be also p equivalent as a value, because if I take the here, say phi, and we're going to say gamma of some. I don't know, V dash A, right? 
And it might happen that actually it ends in the V dash M, right? Because it's a subspace. And then if I move the file from the affine invariants, and we know that for affine connections, all the affine invariants are obtained from covariant derivatives and the curvatures, and they are covariant derivatives, right? So, so we know exactly what are all the invariant operators here. And now the question is, how to get the message which of them will restrict starting with something which is more equivalent, P equivalent, which will again happen to be here, right? And the message I want to pass in the end was some more, say, argumentation, but now I think you are still not too tired, so you can enjoy the final, final claim instead. Actually, actually, whenever I do something like this, then I always get something nearly, in, nearly invariant, and vice versa. If I start with something nearly invariant on the manifold, in the sense that the transformation roots will be only algebraic, then we can prove that it comes from such a construction. Right? So, so simply, we show that the that all operators are exactly coming from the affine invariants on the bundle of wave structures. And this, among others, sort of for us, at least this only ultimately saves the day with respect to the question how to define invariant operators for parabolic geometries. Because, I mean, obviously, the people would say for conformal geometries, it's just those which are invariantly given in terms of one of the metrics and do not depend on the choice. But why should this be the definition? And the answer is must be the definition, right? Because, because now we know that, of course, I mean, all the, all the constructions here will produce such operators and all are produced this way. And we know that if something is invariant, it must be coming this way anyhow, right? So, so, so we were happy to sort of notice that observation in the time we thought we were working on the BGG machinery already in this, I don't know, 2005 or six. And then we agreed with the publisher to split the volumes. And, and so I, I suggested, and then we agreed with Andy, and then I was knowing that I am supposed to go to the Vinograd of special conference that this should be a nice occasion to finish it because you know it's sort of a level of observation so you can't think to to sell it in inventiones or annals because it's no breakthrough result yeah? but it's something which had to be done and as as you will see in the remaining how much time do i have 15 minutes uh, 20. 20 still yeah. i see yeah 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 so uh you can see that it really depends on understanding the jets and all the kind of things Sasha liked, right? So, so I thought this was the right place, and I was happy to then finish the paper and it will appear there, right? So, so that's the how, how people say. I mean, sure, because because I mean that's the how would I say? So that the geometric approach saying to the people in analysis that actually you are not not interested in having some universal methods which would do something reasonable with every pde so the geometric approach should be to get special tools to deal with the interesting ones right and the interesting ones are the interesting ones and the interesting ones for the given geometry are those which come this way <laughs> Well, I mean, yes, I know, right? So, so there were people who were in conformal geometry using the brutal force methods to to show that, for example, there is no cube of Laplacian as an invariant operator on four-dimensional conformal world, right? And that was pretty hard. And then Robin Graham learned about the learn about the Volkmar Wunsch calculus of all of God. So if I knew that it would have been so much easier because I would have the ansatz to test, right? 
And here it's exactly what you get, because if you say that you are interested in operators, say, of order two, which have got this or that homogeneity features, then you can classify them all, right? Because you start with all the yearly ones and then run some, some I don't know, uh, maple or Mathematica package just to test whether whether the algebraic result is PFP variant or not, and that's it, right? You know. So, so definitely we never, never try to deal with some solutions of, of PDEs, et cetera, yeah? but, but that's a way how to, how to get close to, to discussion, what are they? Right, so, so the thing which I should mention here is, um, right, so the picture is there, you see them, you see it all. And what I will need here is the splitting of the of the pool based objects because here on G on G all the things like curvature and other things can be pulled back and get objects on G zero and vice versa. Whenever I have got a a say operator like like this phi there so even if it doesn't fall into the p equivalent ones what i can do is i can always say so well if i fix one of my value structures one of those s's i simply restrict the values of the operator as a functions on g only to the image of g0 and extend them p of p variantly and that will be what I call the, the pullback of the operator to, to the G0, right? So for each choice of S, you will have the operator phi S it's phi S sigma field is simply the restriction of phi to S of G zero extended extend, extended P equivalent, right? So that's the way how, how can I define my, my way how I understand operators upstairs as operators downstairs, but depending on the choice, right? And that's very crucial. And in particular, I can also just instead of phi, depending on some sigmas, I can take the sort of absolute operators and in particular, I can take the curvature. And the curvature, uh, oh, I see, so I use the, it seems, yeah, it seems I've, I've got the, the bar is the opposite way. So for me, S is the section here and bar is here, because if I don't do it like in the text, I will just mess it up later. So it's easier to correct it there. Yes, yes, because it's the G0. G0 is sitting inside as a semi-direct product is a subalgebra, you extend it uniquely. Because each element is just there. So where I, where do I have it? Uh, there. Each G uniquely decomposes a G0 times expo for some epsilon. Right? So it's, it's unique. It's absolutely unique. So here I, so it should be S bar G0 here, right? And I can in particular make S bar of the curvature. So kappa is the curvature function for the curvature K, right? So it's a, function which is equivalent on G valued in the new algebra. And this one is the torsion of the, well, well I didn't say that, uh, well, first, first I should say that if I take S, yeah, then I get something like theta S, plus gamma s 
plus progress. So that's important. I should have told before, right? So so it's just I I understand omega as restriction of omega to the value of s. So on the embedding of g zero in g, that's the reduction, and and it splits because it's already g zero Pivarian. So it splits by the values, right? So this is the solving form coming from top. This is the gamma. This is the so-called row. Yeah, that's the skeletons. In a conformal case. And that explains why the, why the row is so important and nice, right? It's actually the remaining part and it shows you how much because this is the affine connection, which gives you your covariant derivative. This gives you the nabla s. And rho sets how much different this one is from what the Cartan connection would give upstairs. Right? And with the curvature, we know that this is the total of this connection. Then there is the curvature of the connection. Then there is the so-called cotton York tensor of the connection, which I define. And here is for in the conformal geometry is the genuine cotton York. And here it's just the Lie algebra homology operator there applied to the row S. Right? And the cotton York is a, of course, two form, right? It's a curvature. So it, it's two vector fields and it's the covariant differential of rho plus rho evaluated on the algebraic bracket. This comes from the G minus, right? So in the conformal geometry is not there because it's abelian. And plus, there is the algebraic bracket of the rows. And again, in conformal geometry, the G1 is abelian, so, so it doesn't appear, right? In the conformal geometry, this is the genuine Cotton York. So that's it. And of course, this is the, the, the algebra cohomology differential. So I don't have to write this, this one down. And of course, this is then related to the to the T, Y, and W in some straightforward way, right? And now, the important thing is that for for all the parallel geometries, we usually do not say that there is some Cartan connection. We usually say that the Cartan connection is the unique one because it's got the normal normalization properties, and the normalization properties are that the co-differential of kappa is zero, right? So this is a two chain. So there is a co-differential and this should vanish, right? And if you, if you employ to some of the one vector geometries, then it tells you automatically what the rule is in terms of any of those things. And actually what you get is for one graded, For one grading tells you that that rho is minus the inverse of Laplacian on del star of R. And if you if you view it in the conformal geometry, del star of R gives you gives you the Ricci. And of course, Ricci decomposes to two components, and on each of the components, the, La the Laplacian has got different scalar value because they are irreducible. And so you get this formula for scouting out of that. Right? So, so that's a, a straightforward way how to get it. If it's more gradient, then it's a nightmare. It's very difficult to, to get something nice and tell what the what the normalized connection is. But for the one gradient ones, it's that simple. If you if you guess one of the connections, you get immediately the row. If you get both of them, you get the canonical connection upstairs, reading the things backwards, right? Oh, time is running very fast. So. Sorry, so let's now speed up. So one more comment. There is there are very special 
I just told you an example, the, the canonical scouting tensor for conformal geometry. I don't want to write out the formula, yeah, but the formula is you take the Ricci of the curvature, the Ricci decomposes two components, the trace part and the trace free part. And each of them is, a, is to be equipped with different coefficients, which depends on the dimension. That's what the Laplacian does. And that's it. Right? That's, that's how you compute it. Uh, special case are the normal normal structures, normal veil structures, right? It's different than the normal Cartan geometry. The normal veil structures are constructed as the exponential coordinates in the homogeneous spaces. You simply fix, you fix a, you fix a frame, and then, of course, at the depth frame, you will have the horizontal vector fields there. And you can use them to get the, the exponential image, which will be something locally. It will be something which will be horizontal. And you identify it with downstairs. And this gives you, by taking the G0, it gives you the reduction. Yeah. And these coping the normal structures are those with so at the, at the center of them, all the symmetry all the symmetrized derivatives of rho. We move as one form value to one form, right? So you, you keep D free. They vanish up to infinity. So it's something like the normal coordinates by Robin Graham in the in the uh, in formal geometry, except you can see quite easily that the normal coordinates by Robin can work up to infinity. You can get them for every K, because if you go up to infinity, it can't be metric. It must be one of the very connections with with not symmetric row, right? So, um, right, now let's go to the linear calculus. Now, um, the first claim, so the first claim is that if I define phi sigma as d minus of sigma, so D minus is the canonical connection on the on the bundle of the base structures restricted to the horizontal directions to the L minus, right? Then, then the phi S sigma, this is the pull down or push down of the operator depending to choice of the reduction uh, is the so-called is the wrong corrected derivative which is nabla s sigma plus uh, where do I have it? Nabla S here. Nabla S psi sigma plus, and what you have to add is just the row acting at sigma. Again, if you if you start with something which is irreducible p representation, then the action of the neopotent part is trivial. And this one doesn't act because rho s is always valued in the nilpotent part, right? So, so you don't see the first derivative, but once you go to the next derivative, you see already you have to kill the sigmas there, the aerobic size. It will become a tensor product with T star was the original representation. And then of course it already plays a role and gets pretty complicated if you try to, to compute by hand. Uh, claim two. Uh, 
if I it right right if i if i start with j1 v J one VM, then I can take a sigma here, and I can map it to sigma d minus sigma d minus square sigma etc. d minus k. Uh, no, no. Yes, yeah, that's all the minus. The minus is not to minus k. It's just d minus two power. Yeah, this way. Is well defined, and this sits valued in J bar of K of V M, and and here should be J K, and there should be J K. Right. So if I take a section and I iterate the derivatives, then the things are never really never invariant but if I put them together there is miraculously but understandable why I will not go into detail there is there is a a structure here which makes this to be the algebraic version of what the semi holonomic jets are and this constructs you an, an invariant operator which makes it nice Claim three, this helps you to expand. So here, if I take phi sigma equals d minus k sigma, then I can iteratively use this and show that this will be phi s sigma equals nabla s k sigma plus lower the terms, which are of covariant derivatives of sigma and covariant derivatives of rows. There will be nothing else than that, right? That's very important. But similarly, similarly, these curvatures, right? And Therefore, we then can see that actually what I was claiming here is true. It's then putting all these things together gives us the first theorem, and that's the theorem that that whenever I take something which is an affine invariant here, so it's built of covariant derivatives and curvatures. By the way, if I get something which is vertical, then it's if it's in the L plus. Right, so if, if I would take the d plus part, so it acts only algebraically, it doesn't bring anything new. And so we know everything that I create upstairs will be expressed downstairs as my invariants I like, and they all will uh, they all will transform algebraically. Right, so so theorem one. Push down implies algebraic uh, affine invariance of uh, of nabla s. I can claim that because I can always compute rep from the curvature downstairs, right? Because I'm dealing only with the invariant ones. If I would want to extend the theory for general connections, then I would have to, to add here also the dependence on the rows. But for the normal ones, I can compute them. So, so they are again a fine invariance of the 
Nablus here, right? With this universal form you need. So uh, if I, and they are all nearly invariant. And the theorem two, which I don't have much time to say why it's true, but I will indicate at least. So I thought I would need all the blackboards, but I was so careful to use those, but I will not. Theorem two say uh, the other way. as well. So it means if I have something really invariant, it comes this way. How to get there? It's just the most tricky and only really non-trivial part of what I what I find in our paper. And the main point there is that uh, if something is nearly invariant, then at a point, the two reductions share the value, then the operators must be the same, right? Because the epsilon is zero there. But if it's algebraic, it must disappear. So it's simple, right? But, but we know that for each frame, there is exactly one normal structure, so one reduction for which all these guys vanish. And therefore, it's enough to use the special ones, point fives. And for the special ones, with some say, more tricky way how to inductively show that you always get the right formula. And of course, I, I, I was, I was uh, leaving on the carpet that just to get through down and up, we have to restrict ourselves to something which is, in some sense, polynomial and tensorial uh, combinations of all these things we are talking about, right? So the same, same going from downstairs up. So we consider the affine invariants which are built tensorial from the affine invariants there, and then, then we can, we we have to show in the inductively that when we when we differentiate the row, then the bit which is left here, the anti-symmetrization here, it's essentially giving us the cotton York. But then you differentiate it again and again and again, and you have to show that inductively it always just leaves you with the, with the objects which you allow to be there. And that's the way how to go through the last two pages in the, in the paper, and, and it proves then the theorem. So thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the very new things. So first, I want to answer the new record that the almost the structures um, do not belong to this. Because, because in the parallel geometry, so you you simply have the curvature, there, and the curvature is described by the by the cohomology, which appears in the new algebra. In the case of the of the uh, CR structures, you have got one cohomology which happens to to appear in homogeneity one, and then another one which appears in homogeneity two. And therefore, you know that there will be just the nine who stands for the, for the almost complex structure there as one of the curvatures, and then there will be, and then there will be the other one. And the, the CR structures, which are sort of as usual, they simply kill the torsion. So, so that's special case. So that's a, so that's very, so if I understand correctly, you say that the first to do by invariant, you find the almost invariant, and then use the guide of computer. Yes, you could. Correct. Then seven or seventeen. Sure. Then you classify. Well, yeah. generally, I mean the dimensions will not play that much role, so it will be only the very very old dimensions are always different, right? Because if you go to the dimension. Dimension three CR, then of course there is no torsion there, and the homogeneities of the of the harmonic components in the so so coming from the cohomologies, they will appear in homogeneity three, I think. Yes, a second question about the dependence. So that is uh, because, uh, you already um, indicated the way you have to produce the new invariant for even almost the structure, right? 
and then they, they have two questions. So the, um, uh, these are people like Vinogradov, um, like they do. So the CPM equivalent of that is a full model. That means it can solve all the equivalent equivalent problem or only you know, only to show the way how to solve some equivalent. Well, I mean, this is, if I understand right, your question. So there are two, two approaches or two kinds of, of, say, areas of interest, right? So usually the people over the decades, I mean, 100 years already, been talking about the Cartan geometry, they were thinking in terms of the equivalence problem, yeah. right? So what's the complete set of invariants telling us that vanishing of them is equivalent to being homogeneous locally, right? Our intention just coming from motivation from this Penrose group, like people like Michael and others, was to understand what is the special, say, calculus similar to Ricci calculus for Riemannian geometry, say, which would be automatically produce invariant things for all these kind of geometries. And that was leading to the DVD machinery and the, the tractor calculi and things like that. So I didn't touch that at all, right? But so from that point of view, which was our point of view, it's much more interesting. What are the bricks, the tools you can build evidently the and operators from then what is the equivalence problem right the equivalence problem is of course interesting and very traditional but i always had the feeling who cares about the homogeneous case only and as soon as as soon as you have got two curved ones so to to find out whether they are equivalent or not is so absolutely impossible because you get the two sets of the curvatures and point ones, you can see whether they are in the same orbit or not, but then you would have to solve whether, whether sort of mapping properly and some integral unification across the points, right? And I haven't seen any, any indication that some, someone could do it, right? So, so from that perspective, I think the calculus is the more interesting thing. But, but I, 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 I really have to say, impressed because a very strong video published in the archive Good paper. This paper is in archive, yes. Uh, well, yes, and, uh, lovely paper also. No, no, but recently because we submitted it, the due time was last autumn, so it will be just, and I have a very little papers there, so you will find it under my name easily. Surely, but, uh, yes, but, uh, uh, very strong reason, yeah, I would say that, that uh, and there's uh, many implications. Yeah, let's see. And, so. uh, uh, at least, for example, we can uh, ask, um, I talk to you, there are some special class related to um, G2, yeah? Yes. And it's been a, a sequence of um, LD, mm -hmm. you can apply method and find the invariant in such a class. Kind of generic, because generic doesn't mean that's a constant. Uh, yeah, I mean... I mean, definitely the people are thought by Wunsch or earlier the people who, who were interested in things related to the Atiyah Singer index theorem and so on. So in this expansion, in these expansions, you know that all the coefficients must be scalar invariants, right? So so of the structure. And and so one of the special cases is to to try to employ these methods to classify, say, the scalar invariants, where you know that there is no sigma at all. You have only the curvature components. And for example, Folkmar Wunsch did that for the conformal stuff up to homogeneity six, I guess, or something like that. And it's pretty complicated. But his, his approach was also more complicated. I mean, the, the answer is complicated. There are quite a few, and formally for them are surprisingly complex. That's very good, yeah. Uh, so, any more questions from the Nobody, if uh, nobody has any more questions, so let us thank the speaker again. Oh, thank you.